What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Mover Mailbag. I know it's been a while, but uh, I've got some other videos that have been coming out, so hopefully those have been good. But I uh, thought it was time. The Mover Mailbag's kind of been building up, so sorry if I haven't been able to get to your question. Uh, but uh, on today's episode, I will try to answer uh, as many as practical in the uh, time period we've got. So let's get started. And the first one comes from I'm the Amazing 52. And I'm the Amazing 52 says, Hi, CW Lemoyne. I just want to say I love your content and you've helped me a lot. I've been watching since 10K. I just wanted to ask a question. I want to become a Navy pilot and fly the Hornet and then fly the F-16 like you did. Could you explain how you did that and the process you took? And are there any other ways of doing so? Thank you so much for everything you do and can't wait to get the books. Uh, that's actually a kind of a common question and it kind of falls under do as I say, not as I do. Um, I would not, as someone who is in the pipeline or someone in the beginning of their career, be planning on flying for multiple services. It's not practical. It's not um, routine. And there, there are a lot of drawbacks to that. So the way I did it, and I talked about it in one of my other videos, uh, how I flew fighters in both the Air Force and the Navy. Uh, I was in the Air Force Reserve and I went uh, to a Navy Reserve unit. Uh, which had someone that I knew when I was hired by the A-10 unit uh, that closed. And uh, he basically got me an interview and then it became an inter-service transfer, uh, which took about six months, six to nine months or so. And then uh, I went into the Navy Reserve. Um, active duty wise, uh, there's really no way to do it active duty other than through uh, an exchange tour program or something like that. Uh, there are exchange gigs where you know a Navy pilot will go fly like the F-15 or an Air Force pilot will go fly or F-16, it doesn't matter, but they'll go fly uh, an Air Force jet or an Air Force pilot will go fly uh, a Navy jet and get carrier qualified and all that stuff. So it does exist. But to do inter-service transfers and stuff, I wouldn't plan on it, and, and here's why. First of all, if you want a good, fulfilling, robust career, you should pick, you should go to pilot training, get in your aircraft, and do the best you absolutely can in that aircraft. That will be your highest chances of success in your career. You'll be um, humble, credible, approachable, all that stuff. It will all work out much better for you than if you try to go chase aircraft. I know it sounds cool, uh, you know, to be able to do that, but when you transfer from the Air Force to the Navy, you're an outsider and you will be treated like an outsider. And if you do the other way, it's the same thing. You're an outsider because when the Navy and the Air Force do not operate the same way. The basic flying stuff is different. The basic formation stuff is different. There's a lot of stuff fundamentally that's different. And sometimes they're compatible and sometimes they're not. So there is a steep learning curve in trying to go from one to the other. Um, I went back to the Air Force Reserve and that took, oh Jesus, two, three years. I mean, it took a while to get back. And even going back, you know, now I'm kind of an outsider having been in the Navy for six years. So it, it's not something I would recommend. It's not something I would chase. And it's my advice in general, don't go chasing aircraft. Um, you know, it, the shiny jet syndrome is fun and flying fighters is cool, but uh, just giving, being given the opportunity to fly a fighter in general in support of your nation's interests is awesome. And you should be happy to be able to do that. Uh, just as a going out the door game plan, I would not expect to do that. I wouldn't plan to do that. And really, I don't know why you'd want to. I mean, just, just go with the first one that hires you and enjoy your long, fulfilling career. I wouldn't be trying to chase uh, two different things. You know, it's just, it's a one-off. Now, I do know people that have gone the other way. It's much more common for someone in the Navy, for example, or Marines to go from flying the Hornet to say the F-16 or F-15. It is a very common thing because the Navy has much fewer options on the reserve side once you're off active duty to keep flying and go get an airline job, whereas the Air Force has the Air National Guard and the Air Force Reserve. So it's very common for Navy pilots to go to the Air Force, but not very common for to do what I did, which is Air Force to Navy uh, and then back. So hope that answers your questions. I hate to uh, discourage it, but my advice is just to pick one, do well at that. And then once you get to a point where you can make a decision, maybe you go uh, to the reserves or guard and, and do that. All right, next question. This comes from Bella. Bella says, hello Mover, I'm an aspiring fighter pilot going into my freshman year of high school and have got some questions that I cannot ask anyone I know. Number one, I was wondering if Civil Air Patrol might be able to help me in the future. I'm planning to join a cadet squadron near me. I've heard you might be able to learn to fly 
gliders when you're 16 years old and learn to fly small planes at 17, but I'm still not sure if this is true. I have looked online, I'm still not able to get a clear answer for this, but maybe I still might be able to get a pilot, private pilot's license when I'm 17 years old. Two, I have poor vision and was curious if I could get PRK corrective eye surgery when I turn 18 years old. I then planned to wait a year until joining AFROTC in college. I would join in my sophomore year. I'm not sure, but I also have heard that corrective eye surgery would just disqualify. Would I be able to get a waiver and still try to get in? Uh, also, people have told me I should get the PRK after field training in ROTC because I guess it was the better option for them, but I still wanted to get the surgery one year prior to joining would still be possible. Number three, any good tips for receiving a pilot slot? I'm aware there's a regular competition to get the pilot slot and needed some good tips to start studying for. Yes, I'm aware there's some time away, but I know planning ahead is the best option to get the best results and more time to study. Uh, number four, after undergoing pilot training, how easy is it to choose the aircraft you want to fly? Also, how can you choose your desired aircraft? Any tips connected to this would be helpful. Apologize for the extensive question. Uh, however, if you have the time to answer, it would be great, mean a great deal to me. Thank you for all the great videos, books, and your time. Bella. Okay, so let's go uh, one by one. Civil Air Patrol. Yes, highly recommend. It's a great option. I think now they do have pilot, private pilot's license training programs that you can get your PPL through. Uh, I would recommend visiting, uh, going to the website uh, for the Civil Air Patrol, finding your local detachment at an airport or near an airport that has aircraft, and um, go into a meeting, asking the questions there, becoming a cadet, uh, and, and doing it that way because it'll help and it looks good on your resume. So absolutely, it's a great program. Number two, so medical questions. I, you know, that's not really my forte. Here's what I know about PRK. It is allowed. Uh, I don't know why you need to wait a year until joining AFROTC. If you can join as a freshman, I would do that. Uh, but I honestly don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of AFROTC, uh, PRK. But if you're going to do it, make sure that you're within the waiverable limits. Go look at the Air Force waiver guide uh, and do it that way. But uh, it is allowed. I do know that. But I honestly don't know uh, what the uh, what the rules are or why you'd, you'd wait. I'd be... Uh, tempted to tell you to go ahead and just do it right away. Uh, but don't take that my word for it. Uh, I, like I said, I'm still trying to get the flight doc on here. He'll be able to answer. All right. Any good tips for receiving a pilot slot? Um, do your best. Get good grades. Do your best. Study for the AFOQT. Um, you know, perform well in ROTC. Volunteer where you can. Uh, you know, be on time. Know your stuff. Uh, help others and uh you, you know that's that's your best chance i mean it's really it's universal advice you know it's like don't be a douche i mean if you if you just use that basic advice it will help you out uh, but there, there i don't have anything specific i never went through rotc i went through ots uh, let's see, after going to pilot training, how easy is it to choose the aircraft you want to fly? I have talked about this before. Uh, it's based on uh, needs of the Air Force and uh, your class ranking. So that's where it comes down to uh, study, know the general knowledge stuff, know the emergency procedures, know the bull face cold, go to the sims as much as you can. Uh, if they give you free practice time, utilize it and take your friends, help your friends out because the more you can teach, the more you will know. Uh, and instructors take note of that. So be a bro, and that is a generic term, does not mean male or female. Uh, help help your, your classmates out and cooperate to graduate. And that's the best way to get a pilot slot or to get what you want. Because at the end of the day, you know you, your drop may have uh, as many aircraft that you desire or it may have none of what you desire but make the best of it because it's still not the end of the road there's still chances that you can transfer to other aircraft so uh good luck bella uh, like i said i would start by joining uh, civil air patrol uh, local to you ask those questions and then get into the air force waiver guide but i don't see a reason why you'd wait to join afrotc i would just go straight to it next question uh this comes from uh lima x-ray his pseudonym Hello, did you have physical training regiments above and beyond the standard PT to enhance flight fitness? Anything like leg presses, squat core exercises, or aerobic anaerobic cardio? There's a myth in civilian general aviation aerobatic community that avoids cardio work, citing it reduces G tolerance due to enlarged arteries and reduced resting rate resting heart rate from aerobic cardio training. Elite motorsports have extreme physical conditioning regimens and highly controlled diets to be fit in their environment, Formula One drivers, motorcycles. Can you shed some light on your on this from your experience as an elite aviator? Best regards, Lima. I do like 
that elite, elite aviator thing. But uh, honestly, so when I went through, there was a thing called the fighter air crew conditioning test. I don't know if they still do it, but it was, you went to these machines and you had a certain amount of your body weight, uh, a certain amount of reps you had to do with your body weight. Uh, the long and short of it is, uh, High intensity interval training helps because it's bursts of energy that are mostly anaerobic that uh, kind of replicate what you're going to do. You're absolutely correct. Core exercises. Don't skip leg day. Uh, CrossFit helps. A lot of guys like to use CrossFit because you know, it helps with your core and it's that burst of energy kind of thing. But uh, you still are going to have to pass the AF. Uh, Navy PRT and physical fitness tests, which involve a mile and a half run, push-ups and sit-ups. So uh, despite whatever might work best for flying fighters, which is more of the bodybuilder type, legs uh, legs and core, you're still gonna have to run and, and pass the PT test. So what I typically do, uh, you know, I do some running, uh, I go to the gym, I do, you know, squats, deadlifts, leg press, all that stuff, lunges, and, um, you know, I just have a normal uh, workout routine that I do, you know, every day. So uh, I don't think there's anything really special. Just uh, make sure you stay in shape and make sure that uh, you're not skipping any of the uh, core exercises. So, uh, but it's cool to be thought of as elite. Uh, you know, the guys that have the best G tolerance that I've seen are the short, fat, stocky guys that have high blood pressure. That usually works out well, but it doesn't work out for general fitness and it doesn't work out for uh, passing any kind of PT tests. So, um, but I would just say keep a normal workout routine, stick to it and keep training and you'll be fine. All right, last question. This comes from Isaac. Hi, CW. My name is Isaac. I just heard about your YouTube channel a few weeks ago and have enjoyed the Mondays with Mover series. I'm currently in the process of applying to be a pilot. My board is coming up on 15th of August, so fingers crossed. If I get accepted, I will be the first one in my family to join the military. Can you speak into what life is like adjusting to the military? What were some of the big challenges for you culturally and challenges regarding the normal day-to-day -day of a military pilot? Thanks again for providing resources for those who are interested in joining the military and for all of your videos. God bless Isaac. You know, I mean, I grew up in a military family. My dad was in the Army uh, National Guard, um, so he kind of had that Army mentality. But, um, you know, it, it's... Officer training school, you know, getting used to that regimented. They tell you when to wake up. They tell you when to go to bed. It's it's very structured, um, and you have very full days. Going to pilot training, you know, initially you'll have a twelve hour uh, formal release, so you know you're there for very long days. Getting used to working long days, but if you are disciplined in your own life already, it should not be a problem. It's it. What happens is when you're not disciplined, and when you procrastinate, and when you don't like studying and stuff like that. That's where you tend to run into issues because, um, you know, for example, if you go to the Navy, they expect you to show up and know stuff. So, you know, they give you a lot of free time, which is basically enough rope to hang yourself because they expect you to show up to the brief know it. The Air Force holds your hand a little bit more, but at the end of the day, you know, it's on you to be studying when you're at work. It's on you to be studying when you're at home and it's on you to show up knowing the material and stuff. As far as lifestyles go, uh, I didn't, not reading this one, but someone did ask me, you know, do you have enough time to have a family? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, plenty of people show up married, uh, and they're put off base in off base housing. Uh, you know, you, you'll, you'll have time away from family and you'll have time with family, even in pilot training and stuff like that. So it's not regimented to the point that you're marching around and, you know, you don't have any free time, you know, you're still going to have most weekends off and, you know, it's still, you know, your time off of formal release, you know, when you're off of work is still your time. But, uh, the biggest adjustment is going to be, you know, you can't wait till the night prior to cram. You're going to have to be studying, you're going to have to be disciplined and you're going to have to, uh, be able to show up prepared for every flight in order to do well in both, uh, pilot training, officer training school, and all the different schools you're going to have to go to. Uh, once you're out of training, it's kind of more of a nine to five. And by the, I don't mean it's actually eight hour day. I mean, it can vary. It can be short days, uh, you know, six hours, or it can be 12, 14, 16 hour days. It just depends on what's going on, but uh, it's more like a normal job uh, while you're at home station. It just depends, you know, you get brief, mission planning, debrief, you know, in the actual flights and stuff like that. Once you get to the, the deployment, now you're just busy working. You know, you'll go, you'll fly your missions, you'll plan for your missions, and then you go to the gym or whatever, and then eat and go to bed. And it kind of becomes, you'll get into a rhythm and get into a 
routine and stuff. But uh, while you're at home, it's, it's more like a normal job. Uh, it's just some days can get really long and some days can be not too bad. So, uh, but most of your weekends will be free. So anyway, hope that answers your question. Thanks for everybody for the mover mailbag. Um, <clears throat> probably should have mentioned this is the beginning. I've just hit 50,000 subscribers. So on Tuesday, um, I don't know what date that is. Whatever Tuesday is, uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central Time, uh, I'm going to do a live Q&A like we did back when I did the 10,000 subscriber milestone. So I figure uh, 50,000 would be a good place to do that since I haven't done that in a while. So please join me. We will talk about whatever you know you guys want to talk about in the comments, and I'll answer any questions. We'll just, you know have fun and, uh, and just, uh, have a live Q and a. So hope you guys, uh, will join me for that. Hope you've enjoyed this. Please send me any questions or mail, uh, PO box 8594, Manville, Louisiana, 70470. Or you can email me, CWMoyne, CWMoyne.com or uh, find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash CWMoyne. Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.